what's going on? This is Travis P11. Today we're going to be bringing you a general, I guess you could say, field strip and cleaning of this uh, uh, Savage Mark II F22LR rifle. We've got Ammo Cat hanging out with us for this cleaning. She's been freaking out. There's a lot of birds out back. We got the other cat meowing at me at the floor, so do apologize for any distractions that are going on. Guys, I just got back from this place, SS Pond in uh, Lexington, Nebraska, and as you know, Stan, the store's owner, he does uh, hook me up with firearms from his private collection for videos uh, to bring them to you. Um, this is this firearm is not one from his uh, private collection, but it's one that we just took out to the range yesterday and had some okay results about accuracy. Um, anyways, guys, Stan is going to be doing a, a giveaway. I brought the prize home from the store. You guys are going to absolutely love it. The, uh, the little uh, award that he's going to be giving us or the, the gift that he's going to be giving us. And as soon as we hit a thousand subs, again, we'll be making a video and we will go ahead and get that out there so you guys can enter and a lucky person is going to win. Absolutely zero cost. It's just something that Stan's giving. And we, we like to do drawings. I like to do drawings. Um, and Stan likes to give drawings. Just something to, you know, give back to the to the audience that watches the videos. Guys, I have a blast making these videos. I know my editing skills aren't just absolutely off the chain, but... I do what I can with the time that I have and I try to bring you these videos because I really do enjoy making them. So it's just me giving back to you guys. Again, a lot of what you see, a lot of the drawings we give back to you, a lot of the firearms you see in the videos, it's all purchased with uh, revenue that's generated from the channel, from views, okay? All right, so what we have here is that Savage Mark II F. Uh, first thing we want to do is verify that the firearm is unloaded. And it is, okay? Again, I just brought it back in the range last night. Uh, we'll be taking the bolt out here in just a second. Uh, and again, you know, I, I had okay results with this firearm. The accuracy wasn't as good as I was hoping for. I just wasn't on yesterday. It just wasn't one of those good days. So, all right, first things first, let's take a little bit of ram oil. And we're going to go ahead and just wipe off the top of the, uh, the magazines and just give the magazines a general wipe down just to kind of preserve them so they don't start to rust. From the fingerprints, moisture, stuff like that, can get them all wiped up. Now remember guys, REM oil does dry with a protective sheen. It does not dry oily. So if you want long term, you know, I guess you could say more lubricated storage, uh, what you want to do is you want to um, use maybe a CLP, which we also have here. By the way, we've just got ourselves uh, some miscellaneous brushes and cleaning rods and some CLP and some REM oil. So nothing real crazy, nothing real fancy uh, for what we're going to do today, but we're going to go ahead and get started. So all you have to do, guys, is just go ahead and lift up on the bolt and pull back. Uh, to remove the bolt, all you have to do is pull the trigger and the bolt comes right out. Now the bolt itself, we will disassemble it and clean it. It is kind of a pain to do, but uh, we'll just start off with just a general little wipe down of the bolt. And uh, generally, again, REM oil is what I use just as my general cleaner, especially on the bolt where you don't want to get it real heavily uh, you know, lubricated. You don't want to have excessive oil on it because again, that oil is going to attract dust. And so that's something that you want to try to um, eliminate. And again, we put about oh, maybe 30 or 40 rounds through this at the range. It took a few rounds to get it dialed in. And then it took a few more rounds because we tested out two different kinds of ammo and so on. But yeah, this is really not that hard to take apart and we'll show you how to do it. Ah, you can do a further disassembly, but I don't really recommend it. There's just a simple disassembly that we'll do where we're gonna clean out the um, extractors and we'll clean out the bolt face and so on. Just, again, give that a general wipe down. Just get it all, uh, get some of the carbon off of it, a lot of that burnt powder residue. Okay, get that all taken care of, so that's done. Okay, we'll just set the bolt off to the side. And uh, first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is take just a shorter cleaning rod. Okay, we'll just put a patch on the end of that. And I'm actually gonna use some uh, CLP for this because that's gonna really get in there and give it a nice uh, deep clean and then we'll wipe it out with a uh, dry patch. Okay, then we'll go through it again. So again, just get your CLP on a patch. This is just a cut t-shirt that I like to use because these are a little more economical, okay? Just go ahead and put that in there and start scrubbing. I could maybe use possibly like a, uh, a certain caliber of uh, barrel swab might do the job too. And this is just kind of the joke. Now you can take the bolts out of the bottom of the firearm if you want to. You could take the stock out, uh, take the, the whole firearm out of the stock, I guess you could say. Um, that is optional, but it's not a requirement. I mean, you can maybe do it the first time when you get it and so on. Okay, we got that all finished up. Just give a little bit of a wipe down inside the chamber. Really not, not too dirty. I like to go from underneath, just go ahead and set the firearm on the side. Right, kind of a ginormous optic going on there. Okay, we're going to use the same patch here. And uh, just put that in the magazine well and just kind of scrub around a little bit. And if there's any, you know, leftover burnt residue powder and so on. We want to have a nice, uh, clean, preserved firearm so you could leave it as long as you want to. You know, as much as I do shooting, um, some of these guys might only come out maybe once or twice a year and that's about it. So, you know, I don't... 
shoot them a lot. Uh, I wish I could take them out more often, but then I do. Okay, then just go ahead and take that patch and just go ahead and wipe out the area towards the front of the chamber. And you're gonna get a little more powder on your patches when you do that. So you wanna make sure that you're using uh, clean patches every couple, every couple wipes and so on. So go ahead and wipe that off. There you go. Yeah, it's really not that bad. I mean, I cleaned the heck out of it when I first bought it, and uh, that's really not too bad. So, yeah, can live with that for now. Again, I, I've only put, you know, maybe, I don't even know, maybe 100 rounds through this rifle. It's barely broken in, and I'm still kind of learning the quirks of the trigger and the accuracy and still trying to get the scope dialed in. I almost feel like I should maybe have a, a maybe a little bit less powerful scope going on. But, all right, so next what we want to do is just go ahead and take your straw with your uh, CLP and just go ahead and spray a little bit of that down the barrel. Now, you can use a lot of other gun cleaners for this. You could use some, some hoppies or some sort of a bore cleaner if you want to. If you use powder blast, be really careful not to get it on the, uh, on the polymer barrel. Okay, just give that a couple good uh, sprays down the barrel there. Now, you're going to have a little bit come back out the rear of the uh, chamber or the front of the chamber, the rear of the barrel, essentially. Okay, so that's not bad. Okay, got that all set up. Again, I was, I was happy with uh, how this gun performed. I was kind of hoping maybe shoot a little bit better, but you know, for only taking it out a few times, it's about the best I could do. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and just angle it away from us. Now what we're gonna do is take a bore brush. Okay, I've got my little one piece bore brush that I generally use with my uh, 223, with my, uh, or my 5.56, my ARs. Just go ahead and push that from the back to the front. Just gonna go through this once or twice with the uh, bore brush. There you go, eventually it'll go through there. Bore is still fairly tight because I have not put a lot of rounds through it. Now this can make a little bit of a mess out of the end of the barrel, so I suggest that you put a paper towel on there and go slow, because if you just launch the brush right through it, you're gonna end up making a mess uh, wherever you do your cleaning. And again, a lot of carbon fouling came out on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take that out. Give that a little wipe off. A lot of stuff came out of the barrel. Again, the barrel's gonna be you know fairly dirty. I was using a, you know, a round nose lead bullet uh, with my ammo when I took it out yesterday. Okay, go ahead and take that cleaning rod back out this way. Again, this is coated, so it's going to protect your barrel. You're not going to get all scratched up and so on. Okay, we'll go through and take it through one more time. By the way, I do wash my hands thoroughly. I know my hands are generally coated in gun oil and cleaner and stuff when I get done. I use uh, cold water initially and then, uh, you know, warm soapy water afterwards. It's a little hard to see. It's so dark in there. There we go. And I'll have to run back down and get my bore light. We'll use that to check the bore as soon as we're done cleaning the barrel. Okay, just slowly go through. There we go. Okay, that's not so bad. And again, you know, once your patches start coming clean, you're gonna be all set. So again, if you're somebody that is new to 22 bolt action rifles or you're unsure about how to clean the gun for the first time, you know, everybody kind of has their own little method or process they like to go through. And uh, I'm just, this is just kind of how I like, how I generally like to do it, so. Okay, let's go ahead and take a really small patch here and we will run that through the barrel. Some scissors. One thing I forgot from the gun vault downstairs, the little gun room. You just wanna do like a little, I don't know, maybe about three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch. If that patch doesn't go in right away when you're prepping these, then you definitely want to stop because if you put too much uh, patch in there, you're gonna get it wedged in the barrel and you're gonna have a really hard time getting it cleaned out. So, okay, so we'll go ahead and push this through, okay? Start from the rear and just go to the front. There we go. Let's find your chamber. Epic fail. Let's try that again. Okay. All right. Get your patch. There we go. And just go to the front. So I'm just using a 22 caliber jag that you use to just push your patches through the barrel. Okay, go nice and slow, get as much stuff absorbed as you can. And it's gonna come out and it's gonna be fairly dirty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop the camera and I'm gonna do this like six or seven more times because that barrel is really dirty. And uh, when we come back, we'll talk about the next step, which will probably be the bolt disassembly. So just hang on a sec. Okay guys, so what we did was we took about, you know, about probably about eight patches, maybe nine patches. I'd use a, a wet patch, a dry patch, a wet patch, a dry patch, and eventually I got the barrel nice and clean. And uh, you always wanna verify that with your uh, bore light. You should definitely have one of these. Okay, these work great. Um, and then I ran my little, I guess you could say my barrel mop through it one time, just one of these little swab attachments. And then after that, I finished it off with just a uh, 
damp rem oil patch and uh, we're ready to go on. And again, I went through this uh, little chamber area one more time with my little handle with the patch on to get that nice and cleaned out. So that's basically where I want it. When we're done with the whole firearm, we'll wipe the whole firearm off with uh, either REM oil or CLP. I'll probably use a thin coat of CLP because it's going to be sitting in the uh, gun safe for a little while. Um, you can kind of clean out the trigger area. You can go through with the Q-tip if you want to, if you really need to hit a little bit of lubricant in there. But really, they are fairly uh, low-maintenance firearms. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and move on to the uh, a simple, basic disassembly of the bolt and uh, cleaning, and I'll show you what to do. Because this can be just a little bit tricky at times, okay? All right, so we'll go ahead and move on to that. Okay guys, just a few things about the uh, barrel when you get ready to do your disassembly. The handle side, make sure that you have the black coated extractor uh, lined up so it makes a nice 90 degree angle when you reassemble it. And then you've got a chrome extractor on the left hand side. Tricky part about this is getting this little barrel band off and it can be a pain in the butt when you're putting it back on. Um, but I tend to use a little, I'll either use a punch and just kind of pop it off or you can get a little flat screwdriver in there and you can pop it off also. And then when you, we're going to wipe off the extractors and so on, there's the three pieces that make up that whole little unit, the extractor and so on. And then you got your, I just can say your little firing pin area right here in the front. So what I'll do is uh, go ahead and, and get my screwdriver out. We'll pop that off and then we'll just wipe everything down, reassemble it all, put it back in there and then uh, we'll be good to go. So it's a very simple process. So don't get frustrated with this. This part, a lot of people have a tendency to sometimes get uh, upset when they can't get that barrel band back on because it's kind of tricky. You got to make sure that the extractor lines up and the band goes over it and clicks into place. And it's really not that hard when you work on it. Uh, just make sure that you keep it all kind of, you know, this little, you got your little extractors right here and you got your firing pin going down that it's all basically in line and parallel with the, uh, the bolt handle on the rear. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and take my punch and I'm just gonna put it in between here. A little tiny, little thin punch, I don't even know what size this is. Uh, one sixteenth of an inch it looks like. Just put it behind the band and just kind of click your band off. You're just gonna kind of essentially pop it off and then it'll just come right off. You take your band off there I'm kind of doing this from a distance. There we go. Just go ahead and pop your band off. Okay. Put the band right down there. And again, it's really only going to fit on there properly one way. You're going to want to make sure you have it set like this when you put it back together. So you got that little notch. Oh, it's hard to see. A little notch is going to be facing towards the rear. All right. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and take out your different extractors. You just have three of them. So make sure you, again, you want to keep the, uh, the black coated one. Just going to take that out and set it down. Okay, take this guy out. And again, without that band on there, these extractors are not gonna be held in place, so it's gonna be just a little floppy trying to get all the parts out. Get this guy out of here. Whoops. All right, there we go, that's one way to do it. So essentially, your little uh, firing pin is gonna pop out or fall out like mine did. That no way you can see it. Okay, it's gonna be very simple to put it back together. And then we've got the uh, the chrome one in here also that's going to come out too. So you just go ahead and pull that out and uh, you're all set to go there. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and give these guys uh, a little cleaning with another patch. On this, I recommend REM oil. I would not recommend CLP. Um, and it's just because you don't want a lot of residue and oil in there when you do that. Uh, because that's going to attract a lot of dirt and dust. And the last thing that you want is your pin getting fouled up because it has all kinds of uh, coated chunk, you know, grease and, and just garbage in general on it. Make sure your extractor gets nice and clean. Again, you're probably going to get, you know, a pretty decent amount of carbon buildup on that so you can give it a good, good spray there to clean it off. There we go. Again, I've only done this a couple times. So again, this is still, you know, still relatively new for me. Okay. And you got your little extractor right here, your, or push or whatever you want to call it. Okay. Let's go ahead and give that a nice little wipe off there. Get all the carbon off of it. Hit it a couple times. Make sure that's nice and clean. And you can, you know, give this stuff one more little protective coat of oil if you want to before you put it all back together. So, all right. Uh, now, essentially, you just have ridges in this bolt. And so what I'm going to do is just hit it with some REM oil and then just hit it with a Q-tip. And that's pretty much as far as you really need to take it. You don't have to do the full disassembly. You can look up other videos on YouTube on how to do that, but I generally don't. Um, I have another Savage Bolt Action Rifle that uh, Lefty that my wife uses. And... Um, that one really, uh, I have never had to take the bolt apart to clean it up and stuff. It's very simple. So kind of look and make sure you don't have any brass built up on the end of your uh, firing pin area. And again, this looks looks really good. Again, to keep these spotless uh, when I'm doing my shooting and so on. So, okay. 
All right, so what we'll do is I think we will go ahead and do a little reassembly there. You wanna make sure there's no residue. You're gonna get a little bit of buildup on it and stuff on the bottom of it, but no, really no big deal. There we go. Okay, we will go ahead and begin the process of reassembly. Now guys, like I said, uh, this part can be a little tricky, but it really doesn't have to be. So you just go ahead and take your bolt, take your little, I guess you could say firing pin. Okay, it's a little hard to see with the black gun in the background, but go ahead and set it in just like this. So this little part's gonna go straight in. There you go. And then we wanna go ahead and take the black extractor. So that's your little barb, okay, your little extractor piece itself, okay, is gonna be pointed away from you, okay? So you can put it in just like this. Again, it really only fits one way. Then focus for you. Okay, and then you wanna go ahead and take your other little extractor and just put that part in. And again, if you do it the right way, okay, it just kind of pops back into place. You gotta make sure that you kind of hold it like this. You wanna make sure that you can get your band over the top and around the sides. The hard part's getting it to lock into place around all these different parts and get everything snug to fit in there. But when you practice it a couple times and after you do it a couple times, um, it actually gets a lot easier to get this guy to lock into place. It's just something that you have to practice with. I sometimes hook it on myself and just kind of pop it around. But it does, it does kind of stretch a little bit or loosen up a little bit so it's easier to reassemble. So you're just gonna put the band uh, back up on the top. Make sure you have your little notches facing rearward. If I'm wrong about that, guys, I will correct myself in the video, but I'm pretty sure that's how we do it. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and do that so you don't have to see me do it off camera. It's gonna put the band on, snap it on. Um, and again, that could take a few minutes and I don't wanna waste your time. So again, if you do it the right way, black extractor on the right. Um, silver, I guess you could say extractor on the left, and then your little firing pins in the middle. There should be a nice ridge all the way around, nice flush ridge with no edges of the extractors uh, pushed over the bolt whatsoever. It should all be complete. If you hold it, it shouldn't move while you do this, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble, and then we'll bring it back, and we'll have a few words and go from there. Okay guys, so when I did this, I went ahead and started on this side. I put the band into place, and I pushed the little extractor forward. It'll lock into the little gap right there that's in that band. And then as you pull it over, when you get over to this side, what I did was I took a real uh, thin knife blade and just very carefully, I pulled back on the band. <laughs> I tried to do this without cutting my fingers off. Um, I kind of held back on the band as I was pushing it over and kind of slid the band over. So you can kind of use that to push it up and keep it propped away from the bolt as you push down on it. You might get a little scratch on there, but it's really not that big of a deal. Um, and then essentially you are good to go, okay? So there we go, we got that reassembled. No big deal, no problems there. Well, it took me about, oh, it always takes me 10, a good, good 10 minutes or so to get that all taken care of. So, all right, go ahead and give the bolt a nice little wipe down with some rem oil for protective, uh, for protective coating. Make sure you wipe off the, the back area of the bolt, get it all nice and clean. You can run a little bit heavier oil on this bottom portion if you want to. Um, Again, rim oil just seems to be just the adequate amount of lubricant, so it's not too uh, overly lubed. Again, that's not what you want, with the, especially with these little 22s. They start to foul up pretty early, and uh, you don't want to make sure, you don't want to get a lot of powder on them. So, okay, starting to mumble at this point. All right, so what we'll do is go ahead and put your bolt back in. We'll do one dry fire. I know you're really not supposed to do a 22 LR, but we just do once in a great while. I don't think it's going to cause any major issues. So go and pull the trigger in. Oh, we got to straighten that back out. Okay, let's see here. Looks like we're off just a little bit. There we go. Okay, get that all set. Okay, guys, I uh, went ahead and got the bolt back into place there. You got to make sure that everything's. Uh, Nice and aligned so that your lugs are towards the bottom and you got about a about a 30 degree degree tilt on that handle. So again, just very short action. Okay. And just go ahead and pull down on your lock. Make sure your bolt locks into place. Pull back up on it. Make sure your safety is functional. Okay, we're good to go there. Pull the trigger. Okay, nothing happens. Okay, one dry fire. Okay, we are good to go. And uh, I'm gonna dry fire one last time so the bolt is resting. You can hold back on it if you want to, but there we go, that's it. All right, so that pretty much covers it, guys. It's a very simple process to get your gun disassembled and cleaned. It's a little awkward because you don't have a lot of space to work with, but again, these rifles are awesome. You know, out of the box with the field sights, 
you know, you can have great accuracy with them, uh, with the scope on it. You can do really well. Again, I had a, a so-so shooting day at the range. I was, again, a little disappointed, but I can always take it back out. You know, there's always room for improvement. That's just the way I feel about firearms. The more you practice with them, the more you get used to how the triggers function on them and the actions and the accuracy and what ammo works best with them and so on. So I'm just going to go ahead and give the gun just a slight rub down with some uh, REM oil and then it's going to go ahead and go back into the vault. So again, guys, I want to thank you for watching the channel. Um, you can follow me over there on Twitter and Instagram and on the uh, Ordinary Average Guy Gun Channel on gunchannels.com. I'm also doing some of the podcasts. Um, I've been on Night Strike One's podcast on hit or miss uh, a few times. I love doing that on Tuesday nights and I also join in with the Guns and Geeks podcast when I have time. Uh, and that's several um, uh, nights during the week over there on YouTube and also on gun channels that's run by Matt with Never Enough Ammo and I love hanging out with those guys. So if you, excuse me, if you haven't checked out gun channels yet, do so. It is an awesome community. It's people that are into firearms and shooting just like you. Everybody there is great. Everybody, great advice from people. If you want advice on a firearm or you want to just chat with people, there's a 24 seven lobby that's going on that you can join in on. And uh, so there you have it, guys. Again, I want to thank you for watching. Please like or subscribe. Uh, again, I, it's awesome having the viewers. It's awesome having the subs, and I'll keep pushing out videos. I might have another video coming up Wednesday if my little package arrives here. I've got something I want to show off. It's really not a big deal. It's just going to be kind of fun. It's just going to be something for me to do. And I always look forward to upgrading my firearms, and it's a slight upgrade for one of my firearms. So there you go, guys. All right, guys, have a great week. All right, have fun. Be safe. And as always, we will talk to you soon. Okay, goodbye.